Hey, how's it going everyone? It's your boy Wags here, and we are back with another murder mystery in Shadows of Doubt. I'm gonna jump into the video pretty fast, but real quick, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who subbed in the past couple of weeks and really jump-started this journey that I'm on. I'll talk about it more at the end and get sentimental there if you stick around long enough, but I just wanna let you know I appreciate you all. And with that said, I hope you enjoy the video. Wait, 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 stop. Yeah, I'll admit, this is a rather unlucky situation, and you're probably wondering how I ended up in this moment, but trust me, there's an explanation, and you're gonna wanna hear it. Let me rewind. It was Monday afternoon, and I was just making my rounds, doing some everyday side jobs, outsource arrests, that sort of thing. As I was heading up the stairs with crowds of people rushing down beside me, I just so happened to be at the right place, at the right time. I pulled an Indiana Jones on the door and slid my way underneath, possibly locking me on the other side with a killer. The neighbor's door was wide open, but the murder happened next door. The whole situation felt odd. I had to get in, quietly. I picked the lock and peeked in slowly. No movement. I inched in carefully and that was when I saw it, lying on the floor of the kitchen, the body of our victim. I closed the door behind me and began checking around. I still didn't know if I was alone in there. Shot to death by handgun around the hours of 9 and 10. It had been a couple hours already, so I was sure the killer was long gone, but I knew enforcers were still on their way and would be here any second. I didn't have enough time to look through everything I needed to. There was a stray business card on the floor with pretty incriminating writing, and I also found our victim's work ID, Unai Sanchez, company director at the Commerce Corporation. I had a few leads, but definitely not enough as enforcers attempted to make their way into the apartment. I was out of time. I had to bolt, but just as I opened the front door... No, God! Okay, okay, stop, stop. Sorry. Well, now you see we're back to where we started. And now you know how we ended up here. Why did I jump off the roof of the building, you might ask? Well, that's that's a perfectly reasonable question. Um, I guess I only had one thing in mind. Aim for the bushes. Thankfully, I woke up a couple hours later, numb and lying in a hospital bed. It might be expensive, but the treatments were easy and quick quick enough for me to jump right back into the investigation. Also, there was a full bottle of vodka just sitting in the middle of the street. It was my lucky day. Do you know who didn't have a lucky day? Unai. I returned to the crime scene and with my high tier stealth skills, I snuck back into the apartment to finish up my investigation. The fingerprint on the card was Unai's, so even if I did have an idea who it was, I still had no proof to tie them to the crime. There was a gun on the table, also Unai's, and his mail had nothing to go on either. With the information I had, I left the scene of the crime and made my way to the only real lead I had at this point, Unai's workplace, the Commerce Corporation. I grabbed a hot dog for the road and washed it down with the street vodka I found earlier, which gave me just the buzz I needed to solve the case. Damn it! Just when I thought I was gaining ahead on the case, the unexpected happened. A second murder, already just hours after the first. Whoever this killer was, they were on a spree, and I had to stop them before the next one. I had very limited information on who I was actually investigating, and with no suspects, I made a choice to still check out the workplace first. The last worker was locking the place up for the night. It was a perfect time to sneak in and get some more information on what was actually happening. With my lightning fast reflexes, I dodged the scout lasers and made my way to the next room where the power box was. Lights out. Well cameras out. It was clear to me this place didn't value its employees at all. There wasn't a single picture or employee of the month board. Nothing. Leaving me to invade everyone's privacy by checking their profiles on their computers. But hey, when am I not invading people's privacy? I started constructing a decent list of names, but then something registered in my head. Jackson Cook. Address 904 Rue Terrace. The same address the new murder just reported at. I had a feeling that when I would eventually make my way there, the body of Jackson Cook would be waiting for me. 
This had to be a workplace killing, and I had to stop it. It was getting out of hand. My next stop was Rue Terrace, and I was just hoping Cook was still alive. When I got there, blood painted the walls. It was a mess, and my clumsiness got the better of me. I had to hide fast. Once the coast was clear, I found the body. Same setup, shot by handgun. I was too late. I could have prevented this from happening, but instead, they're still out there planning their next murder. Just when I thought I was out of luck, a spare fingerprint laid out the entire framework. Lainey Pointer. She was killing her co-workers. Thanks to her employee file, I already had an address and was on my way to put an end to these brutal killings. Although I didn't know at the time, it wouldn't be that easy. I managed to sneak into Lainey's apartment, but she didn't live alone, making the whole arrest a lot harder than it needed to be. I waited for the roommate to go to bed first, and when I thought I had my moment, I striked. She fought back, bruising me badly in the process and luring me to the hallway. I thought I was going to have to retreat, but I'm just better. With Lainey in cuffs, I searched her. Ammo, but no gun. I needed to find that murder weapon if I was to wrap up this investigation properly. But I had another problem. The roommate. I couldn't let anyone get in my way. This was almost over. Or so I thought. Now that I had a moment, I searched the rest of the apartment, and there it was, the murder weapon. I pocketed it, and just when I thought I was home clear, she was back up. I tried to defend myself, but I was already weak, and the next thing I knew, everything went dark. It was my second time waking up here today, yet despite that I was still eager to finish the job, and I was more amped up than ever before. I went right back there, charging, fuming, steaming, aching for another fight, another whack. It was the roommate, not Lainey like I wanted it to be. That meant she was out on her own, probably hunting down another co-worker. I scrambled through my files and found something I didn't like. A third co-worker that lived in the same building as Cook, the latest victim. I figured if anyone was going to be next, it would probably be them. I headed to the Rue Terrace apartment building once again, but just as I went to walk in, Someone pushed past me, bolting for the phone. I already knew what happened. I was too late again. She had been right underneath my nose for the longest time. I just couldn't pinpoint her down. Back to the Commerce Corporation I was heading. If anyone was at work, I needed to find them before Lainey did. But as I knocked on the door of the business, a familiar face opened the door for me. I didn't let the moment slip. In front of everyone, I placed her under arrest. Her days of killing were over. There was also the murder weapon again. She must have stolen it off me when they knocked me out. I was happy to say this case was nearing its final moments. The workers of the Commerce Corporation wouldn't have to worry about their killer co-worker anymore. I turned in the case, took my payday, and hit the nearest bar for one last drink. It was over, and it was time for me to head home after a long day's work. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this far into the video. I hope you enjoyed it because it's time for the sentimental bit now. So if I could just keep your attention for just another minute or so while I say thank you to everyone who's been showing me in the channel love lately. I'm talking comments ranging from compliments about the editing to the narration, the sound, and much more. Things you don't usually expect people to go out of their way and say good things about. So the fact that a lot of people have lately, it really means a lot to me and it's just a big motivator for me to keep growing the channel. As of this moment, I'm currently sitting at 500 subs and that has grown from under 200 in just the past 10 days or so. Like I keep saying, the growth has been insane to me and you're obviously all to thank for it. Truth be told, I don't have much of a plan on where to take the channel from here. I'm just going to keep uploading games that I like, tips, videos, reviews maybe. Right now you can keep counting on Shadows of Doubt and Deceive Inc, but I'm also thinking of picking up Dredge, A Day Out, Silica, and a few other titles in the coming weeks and months, so if that sounds cool to you, it's a pleasure to have you all here. I really do feel like this could be the beginning of an awesome community, and I just can't wait to see what the future holds for us and the channel. So. Please don't hesitate to drop me comments down below. I do my best to respond to everyone, keep track of all my comments, so whether you have game suggestions or just want to say hey, write me a comment. And remember liking and subscribing helps me out more than you know. 
Thank you once again for being here. And with all that said, I will see you all on the next one.